How do children develop? How do they discover what is real and what is pretend? How do they know who to trust when one person says one thing and another person tells them something different? How do children learn to catch a ball or balance on one leg? How do they learn to read and write? How can we tell that development is progressing as it should? These are some of the questions that we are trying to answer at the Institute for Research in Child Development. The capacity to distinguish what's real from pretend is an important achievement that develops during infancy and early childhood. And children are very good, for example, at engaging in pretend play, but how do they work out that fictional characters are not real? One of our studies is looking at what influences children's ability to tell apart what's real from what's fictional. One of the challenges in investigating young children's development is that they haven't got the necessary language skills to be able to answer questions. So instead we can rely on using their eye movements and we can measure these using an eye tracker. An eye tracker is a camera that uses infrared light which allows us to see where on a computer screen a child is looking while we present various pictures. We're analysing the data to find out which parts of the pictures children find particularly interesting and where they look longest. And by analysing their eye movements, we can infer how knowledge in the brain is organised and how children are developing the ability to tell apart what's real from what's fictional. Children learn so much about the world from what other people tell them, but that information isn't going to be right all of the time. So because of that, children need to try and figure out who's a reliable source of information to learn from. And my research looks at the development of this critical thinking skill in, in young children. And with the help of some puppets, uh, I try to find out the sort of cues that they pay attention to to decide who they're going to believe or trust. So in this particular experiment, we're looking at whether children understand that if more people agree about a particular point, they are more likely to be right than when just one individual believes it, as they might be mistaken. Now I'm going to show you something you've probably never seen before. It's a bit funny looking. Do you know what that is? OK, well, that's all right, because the puppets are here to help you. I'm going to ask each of them what they think it's called, and then maybe you can decide, OK? So let's see, first of all, what Lenny says. What do you think it is? That's a fendel. OK. And Larry, your turn. What's that? That's a fendel. OK, and Barry? What do you think it is? That's a fendel! And last puppet. What do you think it is, Jerry? That's a modi. Okay, face, so do you remember what happened? These three puppets said it's a fendel. And this puppet said it's a modi. So what do you think it's called? A fendel or a modi? A fendel. Good girl, well done. So in this example, we saw that the little girl picked um, the information supplied by the three puppets over just one puppet. And it's these kind of findings that tell us that children aren't willing to believe everything they hear, but rather they're already paying attention to the sorts of cues that adults pay attention to and are quite selective in who they trust. Uh, difficulty with sleep is very common with children with autism, which is very difficult for both children and the parents. I've been working with Dr. Lucy Wakes who's been involved with many projects which looks at the ways of how to manage these difficulties. The current project is called Snagoda, which is joint study funded by Research Autism. We are looking at blanket like this. The way we measure the sleep is by using actigraph like this. We ask children to wear this active watch during the sleep. Once it's been worn, we download the data by using an interface like this one. It downloads the data onto the computer, as you can see on the screen. This actigraph shows a pattern of the child's sleep, and it is used in conjunction with the sleep diary, which parents keep. The aim of the study is to find out whether a weighted blanket is effective in improving nighttime sleep in children with autism. We don't often think about it, but skills of motor control and coordination are really important for our everyday lives in terms of how we look after ourselves, feed ourselves, wash ourselves, and move about the environment. And um, if things go wrong in this area, it can have a really neg negative impact on our lives. 
So some of my research has been involved in developing assessment instruments to identify both children and adults with difficulties in these areas so that professionals in both health and education can identify individuals and to support them both at home and at school. We've developed a range of tasks for children from the age of three up to 16 and these include tasks that look at how they use their hands in a number of different ways, how they can catch and throw and how they balance. One focus of my work has been on the specific skill of handwriting. This is a skill that's still important for children in school so that they can keep up with their classwork and so that they can perform at their best in written examinations. So we've developed a test to look at handwriting speed in order to identify those children who really struggle to keep up and who might need some sort of support in the school environment. One area of our work here at Oxford Brooks involves understanding the mechanisms behind developmental coordination disorder and together with my colleague Dr Kate Wilmot we've been looking at the perceptual motor skills of this particular group of children. In the longer term our research will provide information for health and educational professionals to help them target specific interventions for these children to help them in their everyday lives. So the equipment we have here is a Vicon uh, motion capture system which is, uh, is made up of six cameras and what we can do with this is we can really very precisely measure different types of movement. Uh, the way in which we do that is we stick these small reflective markers on um, for what we're doing here on, on the hand and um, then we ask children to make a very simple movement like a, a reach out and pick an object up type movement. And what the equipment gives us is it gives us the very, very precise coordinates, X, Y and Z coordinates of every position of those markers. And what we can do is we can go back and we can look at different aspects of movement. So, for example, how fast the child moved, how long they spent accelerating as part of the movement, how long they spent decelerating. And also, because we're looking at uh, the finger and thumb, we can look at the, the grass movement. Exactly how did the finger and thumb come together in order to pick up an object? Um, and really what we're interested in is looking at how children plan movements. So if we ask them to reach out, pick up an object and throw it, how is that different than if we're asking them to reach out, pick it up and place it? What this equipment allows us to do is look at those precise aspects of movement and look at them both in terms of uh, children who are developing normally, but then also children with um, very precise motor difficulties. And specifically we're interested in children with um, Developmental Coordination Disorder, or DCD, and looking at how the, the movement planning is different across uh, the typically developing children and, and these children with DCD. Our work is helping children with autism to get a better night's sleep. It is providing clinicians and teachers with better ways of assessing motor skills like writing or balancing. It is helping parents and professionals to have a clear understanding of the kinds of difficulties that some children may experience as they develop. And most importantly, we are providing guidance about how to support children who are facing challenges in their lives to become the best that they can be.